AMD just improved your video quality for free if you have an RX 6000 series graphics card. That's it. It just matches it with RX 7000, at least for H.264 encoding, for Twitch streams and YouTube streams. But does it make a significant difference? Does it really bring your AMD graphics cards encoding up in line with other competitors? You might not like my answer. Alright, the truth is, software encoder updates are rarely that big of a deal. Sure, there are occasional leaps in performance or features, as with NVIDIA's new NVENC OBS update in 2019, or AMD's more recent involvement in overhauling their encoder in OBS. But these little updates, uh, best not to get too wrapped up in them. AMD would seem to agree, as it was mostly a minimal mention in their update blog too. I see a lot of impatient comments when either these updates release, asking about why I haven't covered it yet. It's just a lot of work that seriously derails whatever else I had going on at the time. For OBS comparisons, we're talking hours of just starting and stopping recordings, changing one setting at a time, doing it again and again. For quantitative analysis, it's writing big encoder batch scripts, then waiting on the VMAF analysis to finish. All to then bring everything into Resolve, carefully line up the comparison shots and pixel peep for more hours, only to ever see minute differences. The first impression? This update didn't bring much to the table for visual quality. But the older RX 6000 cards do now seem to fall perfectly in line with the RX 7000 series cards for H.264 encoding. But that difference was never strong in the first place. Alright, I just want to give you all an idea of the difficulty of this kind of job, because it's not, it's not straightforward. The graphs would have you believe the RX 6000 series got worse over time, and that the 7000 series is worse than the, the, the older card now, which isn't really that straightforward. And honestly, if you start pixel peeping in at some of this stuff, I have the new driver version encoded on top, the old one on the bottom track. If we just start pixel peeping at random points, Sometimes you can't even tell there's a difference, but there are some, there, there, there are some other points. Like if we, if we come over here, we, we zoom in, we're at, these are 1080p clips, so I have them on a 1080p timeline, but obviously we're zoomed in on a 4K monitor here. This is the new one you're seeing now with the new driver. This is the old driver. New driver. Old driver. Now the old driver is worse in some ways because it's kind of blurrier, it's smearier, there's a little bit more jaggies, and in the new one, there's still some banding going on. This is a 3500 kilobit per second clip, by the way. But the structure is slightly better maintained. But it is a... It's not like... Uh, that, I think that's what I'm trying to communicate with these updates, is it's not like it just makes it instantly better with the snap or anything like that. If we come over here... Again, we're currently looking at the new encode. And just look around at some of the small details. We have stuff like on the wall here. If we flip over to the old driver encode, this one kind of looks a little better in some ways. Like this, this vent here, it looks a lot more intact. This is back on the new one. We got a lot of color fringing over here, a weird line showing up right here with some color fringing. On the old one, it looks a little better. Some of that's still there, but it's a little better. If we look at this line, kind of sucks on both. You can see what I'm saying with that. Flipping over to Battlefield, it's actually a little easier to tell. This is at 3,500 kilobits per second. And we have just like a complete mess of a ground like this. This is looking at the old driver. This is the new driver. So it's both garbage because it's 1080p60 at 3,500 kilobits per second with a very noisy scene. But the old one, you lose a lot more rocks to the blocks. And you can see a massive, you know, blocking area there. Whereas that area gets smaller and the rocks just ever so slightly look more like rocks in the new driver. Bumping it up to 6,000 or 6 megabits per second. If we look at the clouds up here, this is with the new driver. Looks about like clouds. If we flip to the old one, it looks marginally worse because there's a little bit more banding and pixelization popping up on the details. Flip back to the new one. You may not have even noticed the difference. But it's just slightly there. Some of the fuzzier, you know, the softer, more cloudy details are preserved on the new driver. But if we flip over to here and say focus on this messy water puddle, we are on the new driver here. Back to the old driver. Old driver does look a little noticeably worse, but it is. It depends. Actually, in certain areas, 
the new driver looks worse. It's just kind of shifting around what the focus is. In the old driver, this power line is lost a lot more. In the new driver, the line is a little better maintained. But these are the kind of details we're looking at. And then if we want to compare the new card, the 7900 XT, to the 6600, we are looking at the 7900 XT right now. And if we zoom in on this cargo container, this is the newer graphics card, the, the brand new one that just came out. The old one looks better here. The lines are way have way more contrast, are way clearer, and the text is a lot blockier like it's supposed to be on the old card. The new one is a blurry mess on this text. But then if we come over here and start zooming in on the guy I'm shooting over here and the text around here, this is the new card. This is the old one. The lines and the text perhaps look a little bit better on the, on the old card, but on the new card here, everything else looks a little clearer. You get a little bit more contrast, but it's like it smooths over the, the, the blocking a little bit better. So it is very hard to tell. This is at 3,500 kilobits per second, which is like impossible to really get looking good. If we bump it up to 6,000, we have the crazy overworld view, which is obviously hard to encode. And you got the dithering of the level of details in the game. This is the new card. This is the old one. Now that is something that is night and day of a difference. I don't know, maybe not night and day, but like, that is blurrier, colors are mushed everywhere, you have no details. On the new card, you get some of that structure back, a lot of the color is maintained a little bit better on the new card. A couple more little samples here. What do we want to look at in this one? I think just the general details in here, we'll actually zoom out a little bit. This is the new card. This is the old one. The old one you immediately notice when I switch back and forth. That's a more blockiness and banding starts popping up in these outer areas that are not there on the new card and the new card has a lot more detail preserved in the actual building you can see shading in the window and lines on that little box there and things like that and then we switch over here similar scene to before we got little dudes off in the distance this is the new card this is the old card a lot more blockiness goes in there and you lose some of the outline of those figures and that line that is just a straight line on the new card. It is completely gone on the old one. So regardless of what the VMAF scores say, you, we're, we're looking at marginal differences here. And I just, I want to convey that the best I can because this discussion is very hard to have. One piece of useful info is that through these updates, since my look at the AMD B-Frames update last summer, RX 6000 series cards are now capable of encoding using the full Max 3 B-Frames, where before the encoder would lag like crazy. That's only really beneficial for more still seen streams like, say, streaming Dungeons & Dragons. One B-Frame looked and scored the best at all bit rates for RX 6000. However, on the new 7900 XT, zero B-Frames actually looked and scored the best. So if you are one of the lucky ones who have upgraded to RDNA 3 and live in that RDNA 3 life, just leave the OBS settings on the default of zero here. I know it might not seem like much, and honestly, I wasn't even going to cover the update, but your comments spoke loud and clear, and I figured I owed it to you to at least show you why I'm not really saying much about it. I will be working with AMD very shortly to provide you with the best settings for AMD encoding on any graphics card using the new OBS plugins. Among other things, things have been really delayed. I had a big family emergency come up in January and it's completely screwed up my schedule as I'm sure you've seen by the lack of uploads. But I do plan on getting you the best possible information here as there's a lot of really cool stuff happening. And honestly, these kinds of encoder tests take hours and hours of testing settings, pixel peeping clips, fixing, finding crashes, fixing wrong settings, redoing everything over and over and over, all just to make your life a little bit easier. So when it's time to kick back and relax and have fun, say with something like a nice game of Dungeons and Dragons, despite common belief, I don't like going through this granular maintenance and obsession over details for something that's just supposed to be a leisure activity. And I have to admit, I've put far less time into tabletop games over the years than I wanted to because of this issue. World Anvil completely fixes this problem. When I discovered it last month, I was honestly livid that I hadn't discovered it sooner, like 15 years ago sooner. <laughs> World Anvil is a set of world building tools that take your RPG experience to the next level while also making your life easier. Even better, it's a tool set that benefits everyone in the process, not just DMs. With my ADHD, I'm always wearing many hats, but World Anvil has something for players, for DMs, for writers, and world builders alike. 
which is awesome. You can do everything in one place. For DMs, you can build your own complete living worlds full of custom characters and adventures, plus you can use it to actually present your campaigns to your players, too. All of your notes and progress are fully saved, ready to reference whenever. Everything you've created is presented right in front of you in an easy-to-manage way, and they have a community of over 750,000 world builders and DMs happy to help build your best campaign. Players get the most extensive character manager available with character sheets, journals, inventory management, and spellbooks. Plus, for the writers out there, World Anvil has the best tools to help you organize, write, present, and even publish your own stories and game settings. No friction going from writing to playing, and World Anvil supports over 45 game systems, including D&D 5e, of course, or you can even make your own. Head on over to worldanvil.com and use coupon code EPOSVOX to save 40% on any yearly subscription. To get a general idea of how to best use your AMD graphics card in OBS until we get the new settings video coming, uh, go ahead and click that link in the video description or on screen now as you won't want to miss it. It is very important information, and otherwise remember to be kind, rewind.